The following is a presentation of Muddy River News. Your financial needs aren't independent of each other, so your financial advisors shouldn't be either. At Mercantile Bank, our experienced United Wealth professionals are united to serve you and your complete financial planning and wealth management needs. Are you just starting your investment journey or need to roll over a retirement plan? Do you need to plan for a loved one with special needs or for your own life after work? Maybe your business needs a succession plan or you want to enhance your employee benefit programs. Whatever steps you need to take, our United Wealth experts are ready to take them with you. Together, we are united. Welcome to the Business Spotlight, brought to you by Mercantile Bank. I'm Ron Kinscherf, and we're joined by George Eversman, president of Dot Foods over in Mount Sterling. So uh, rumor has it that they tried to get you to change your name to Tracy. <laughs> that is a rumor. It's they, just a rumor. It wasn't true? successful. So are you the first non-Tracy to be a president? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. added pressure? Oh, I don't know if I'd say added pressure, Ron. You know, we've... Uh, We've obviously got a great team of you know six thousand employees and a great senior management <laughs> right, right. team. So, no, I, I wouldn't say pressure. Uh, I'm excited about it though. Yeah, I bet you are. So, what is your role? Obviously, you're president. Yeah. Um, are you like a herder and making sure everything underneath you goes well? Is it something along those lines, or what actually is your responsibility there? Yeah. So, I, I would say it's to to lead a great team. Um, you know, our business is set up like a lot of others, where we've got major departments mm-hmm. and great senior leaders that head up all those departments. But our senior management team has been, you know, there's been, a, there's been some change, but I would tell you it's been relatively stable. You know, mm-hmm. the thought process, the succession planning that we've got, um, we've had a lot of really talented people retire over the past few years, but the talent that's, that we have in our senior management team today, you know, we're very excited about that. So really, I, I would tell you there's, a, there's still a feeling of a lot of consistency right. uh, that's, that's there. And so... Um, so my job is to make sure to keep everything running uh, along with our senior management team. And um, I, I, would, I would hope that our employees really haven't felt any change right. whatsoever. Uh, how, what was your start at Dot Foods and how long ago was that? Yeah, so it's, I've been there 28 years now. Wow, okay. And I started in a job that at the time we called marketing manager. Mm-hmm. And so dealt with our suppliers. So people like a Kraft Heinz, you know, or a Smuckers, mm-hmm. who we buy product from. Um, was my first job there and um, still a job that we have there today. To this day, it was one of my most favorite jobs at Dot. Um, but that's how I started and it's okay. almost 30 years ago now. So as you made your way through Dot, was this always in the back of your mind that you would end up in this position? No. Okay, <laughs> so so when did it, were you surprised when they asked you to be in this position? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, um, you know, the, the, there's lots of great things about Dot, but the opportunities for employees that want to do more is, mm-hmm. is one of the big ones. And so, um, you know, for me personally, I, I didn't have an end goal in mind. Right. Um, you know, as, as the business has grown, um, there's been opportunity for lots of us. And um, so, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a little bit surprising, but something, you know, that I've been also working towards the last few years. And so, so excited about the opportunity. Cool. Um, everybody knows Dot as a redistributor of food products, correct? Correct. Uh, is that still the main, I know that's still the main purpose of what you guys do. Are there other things that are going on now that we may not be familiar with Dot Foods? Yeah. So a couple things there. The word redistribution is, it, it, the definition is a little tough. So mm-hmm. we, we've actually, in some parts of our business, changed that to a real more of a consolidator is really our business okay. model. That, that's almost a better definition of what we've done for okay. 60 years. And so if you take a Kraft Heinz and you take a Smuckers and you take all the thousand manufacturers we have, we consolidate what would otherwise be small shipments for them. And we do their warehousing and transportation around oh, okay. the country okay. for them. So consolidator is really a better term. That's more of an industry term, especially in like the grocery industry where we've grown quite a bit over the past 20 years. And so, but that's the, that's the lion's share of what we do will always be our base business. But that being said, we, we do have some things to your question that we're really excited about, um, mostly in the e-commerce area. Okay. So we've purchased uh, some smaller e-commerce companies over the past three years. Uh, and really we'll always be a logistics company, but we want to become even more of a technology company as well. Okay. So these two companies that we've purchased allow for our customers, you know, our wholesalers and our retailers that have their own warehousing, we want to give them tools that will make their products and our products more accessible in the marketplace and get more eyeballs on them through an e-commerce type of strategy. So are your customers both, for lack of a better term, let's say retail and then also the manufacturer? 
So uh, yes and no. Okay. So uh, our manufacturers we see as business partners, and we're really a customer of theirs. Gotcha. Okay. So Kraft Heinz, we're a partner with them, or a Smuckers, as I mentioned earlier, where we work with their supply chain team, and we're their less than truckload supply chain arm. Okay, gotcha. So what's, okay. what, what a man, food manufacturer is really good at doing is making products, marketing it, mm -hmm. and then shipping a full truckload to a Walmart or a Cisco. Mm -hmm. uh, what they're not great at is if it gets lower than that or a less than truckload quantity, there's complexity with it. They've got to use car common carriers from a trucking standpoint mm -hmm. that aren't very reliable. And we add that reliability and that service to those manufacturers. But there, we're really a customer of theirs. So is, it a, is there a challenge to keep things fresh, though? I know you've got warehouses all around the country, correct? Correct. Or depots, whatever. Yeah. It, so that's got to be one of your huge challenges. It is. So we have, we have uh, 12 and soon to be 13 uh, distribution centers okay. in the U.S. And then we have two in Canada. And so we have a replenishment team or purchasing team that is incredibly talented. And they're... they're charged with making sure we got the right products in the right distribution center to service the customer first and foremost. Mm -hmm. With 140,000 items we offer, that's really, really hard. That's amazing. And then you add in yogurt, to your point, or a really short shelf life product, you gotta have the right product and then you gotta sell it in a matter of days or it's gonna go right. obsolete. And so um, we, we've tried to supply them with the right tools, but it's a, it's a really talented group. And that is a big challenge for us, is, is keeping our fill rate, our service where we want it, and also keep the product fresh. And you're leading to my next question. One of the areas I want to talk to you about was data. Yeah. And I know you've come a long ways, Dot has, in massaging data and getting the most out of your data. Yeah. And that's critically important to the efficiencies and your margins and all that type of stuff, correct? Yeah, it is. You know, data, I would tell you every year over the last 10 years, I think the importance of data is going up exponentially. Oh, yeah. Not only for us, but any, Anybody. any, any company in any industry. industry. It's, it's the gold of business right now. It is. It is. And when, when we think of data, there's, there's, there's two or three different types of data, the way we think about it. Um, it's knowing your customers really well and making sure you, you know, kind of skew your business to have the most value to your customers mm -hmm. based on the data you can right. understand on how they buy, their buying patterns and things like that. The other data is product data. And so when you got 140,000 items, you got to make sure you know the exact shelf life and the exact production date and how long can you hold it before it can go obsolete. And so that's probably the heart of your question product data has become incredibly important for us over the past 10 years. And we've tried to work with, you know, some key industry associations to drive better data from the manufacturer so that we can also have the right data. We even do some things to kind of make the data more valuable for our customers. And so a good example of that is images. When I go back to our e-commerce strategy mm -hmm. I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, our images in the food industry aren't great. And so we've actually done some things to enrich. Can you, can you define an image? Sure, a picture of a product. Gotcha. So if any of us go into any, any website to buy products, whether it's mm -hmm. electronics or food, you know, the picture is obviously critical. Well, there's a lot of our products that don't have great pictures or great images. And so we've worked on ways to enrich that. Um, there, there's other product attributes, so like the nutritional value mm -hmm. or, you know, obviously there's allergens or things that people need to stay away from from an allergy standpoint. And we want to make sure that we not only take the data we're receiving from our manufacturers and communicate that to our customers, but if we can actually make that data even better downstream, right. we think that's going to help just our core business. It also has got to help your agility as a business, too, because it's as, business, as time goes along, being agile is also very critical for an industry. It is. Or for a business. It, it, it is. And, you know, one of the things, as we've gotten bigger, being agile becomes harder. Correct. <laughs> There's more, have, to move. there's more to move. Mm -hmm. There's more people to move. And so one of the things that, you know, one, one of the sayings that, you know, uh, John Tracy, probably more than anybody has instilled in us is to um, think big, but st still act small. Right. And we, we have that in, the, in our lobby when you walk into our yeah. building. And it's one thing that we strive to do in lots of areas, but staying agile on things like data. Um, that mantra helps us. I, a lot. The way I kind of view it is, you've got an ocean liner now, and you're you're Captain Stubing, so to speak, of the love boat, and you got to make sure you guide this boat through ocean. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, keeping everybody on the same. I lost my analogy now, but keep everybody yeah. on the same Afloat, page. But, yeah. yeah, keep everybody on the same page. Yeah. It, it is. It's um, again. That's where it gets back to the processes we've built over the past mm -hmm. sixty years and the fundamentals we've built make uh, everybody kind of on that boat stand, uh, steer in the same direction right. a lot easier. Um, another thing that you guys have done that people might not know is you've adopted robotics mm -hmm. in some of your warehouses. And I think that that's really 
a cutting edge type technology that you guys have accepted too. Yeah, we have. Um, and so Mount Sterling is where we made mm -hmm. the biggest investment and the biggest bet. So um, we uh, just turned on, the, it's in our freezer, which is really right. unique. There are a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot, there are uh, several um, food warehouses around the country that have done this in an ambient or a dry setting, but we're one of the first to have done it in frozen. The reason we picked frozen is when you look at our growth over the next five years, particularly in Mount Sterling, hiring enough warehouse people is one of our challenges. Right. And the, the le one of the least desirable you know, positions is in the freezer at night on a weekend. Because it's zero degrees. It, it is. It's not 31 and a half, it's it, zero. It is zero. Correct. And so we, we've, uh, it, and it's, it's, it's a pretty cool technology where it's got 12 cranes um, that you know, pick full pallets of product, mm -hmm. bring it to some automation, and then um, there's some layer picking that, that we have as well. So um, we're excited about it. it um, it's pretty unique in Mount Sterling. It's about 15 stories tall. So oh, is it? Yeah. It, so uh, do you ever sit back and go, oh my gosh, this is so cool. What am I, I'm working for a company that's got this type of stuff. Yes, is a short uh, that's got, Yeah, that's gotta be crazy. It is, you know, and it's a testament to the Tracy family that, you know, we continue to reinvest mm -hmm. a lot of capital in the business and um, still have you know really big expectations of where we want the business to grow and automation is going to be a big part of that so what are the challenges and you, you mentioned mount sterling and having robotics in mount sterling but what are the challenges of actually operating this business out of mount sterling rather than i don't know move to springfield or quincy or whatever yeah i, I the benefits the, the benefits list is still so much longer it, okay. than the challenges and uh, when you think about our employee base in mount sterling it's obviously a small community but the stability there, the work ethic there, the, the, um, the family environment that we have there, those types of things are invaluable and the reason why the business has succeeded. I, I'm convinced of that. Okay. Um, the, the, one, the one obvious challenge though is, you know, whether it's Mount Sterling or West Central Illinois, um, you know, the employee base you have to pull from mm -hmm. is a challenge when you go to uh, look at your five-year growth plan or 10-year growth plan, and that's not unique to DOT. Uh, there's a lot of successful businesses here in the area, yeah. and I think we all share one challenge, which is do we have enough labor um, to succeed on, on where the growth expectations are at? But that's really, I would tell you, Ron, one of the few downsides. Um, the, the upside of, of, you know, when Robert and Dorothy Tracy started the business there um, and the benefits we've seen over 60 years, I think is a big part of why we've been successful. I think one thing you guys have done a really good job at, and again, this is, I had never worked there, but it's the flexibility you offer your employees. Um, having talked to some of the warehouse people, is you know, the they basically can make their own schedule, unless I'm wrong. To a certain extent. Certain, yeah, obviously, yeah. to a certain extent. But um, it's a very everybody says they're a family friendly atmosphere, but you guys are truly a family friendly friendly atmosphere. We try. You have to be to keep the employees. We've tried to be. Um, you even before COVID, we were trying to get more aggressive on work life balance. Mm -hmm. um, we have we are far from uh, saying we've succeeded there though. Um, it's it's one of the things we continue to work on. But from an operational standpoint, just to give you a, a couple of examples. So for drivers, for example, we've got you know some different uh, work schedule options where they can drive for four days, take four days off, mm -hmm. and we've got a long way to go to still give our drivers, as an example, uh, enough freedom and the ability to plan their personal lives. You know, being a truck driver is an incredibly hard job. Mm -hmm. One of the parts that makes it hard is that you're on the road, obviously away from your family, and we've tried to come up with ways to give them better flexibility so they can plan special family events. We haven't cracked the code completely, but we're working hard on that because it's gonna help our driver recruiting and our retention. Mm -hmm, yeah. From a warehouse perspective, maybe part of your question, we've also gone to some different scheduling where people can work three 12 hour days as an example. Yeah, that was, that's what I was getting yeah. to. That way they can be there for kids events, doctor's appointments, stuff like exactly that. Exactly right. So. Um, you know, our operational jobs though are incredibly hard, but they're the backbone of what we do. Mm -hmm. and, and we've got to continue to challenge ourselves. How do we give employees more uh, options in the future? And um, it's just hard in that environment, but something that's important. To Not them. to put you on the spot, but do you listen to your employees or do surveys or interviews with your employees to say, hey, what would make working here better? We do. Um, but like any, any company, whether they're successful or not, there's always room for improvement there. But we do an annual survey. Okay. It's actually coming up here in about a month, mm -hmm. and um, and we do our best to then you know have our managers have action steps around what they heard from their employees. Um, some of our scheduling flexibility came from those surveys. Mm -hmm. um, we again 
we're far from perfect here, but we try to enforce with all of our managers, regardless of where they're at in the business or what location, to uh, be out with their employees and ask questions and listen, because that's really where you get the best feedback, right. and it's in the moment. And we've got always room for improvement there, but something we, we try to do as a standard practice. You've got a conference coming up in June, mid-June, right, down in St. Louis. Yeah. Uh, what's that all about? I didn't know you guys had, I mean, it, who comes? Yeah, so it's our annual trade show. It's called Innovations. Um, and we've done it now for 20 plus years. And we invite the majority of our customers from all over the country. And it's a mix of, you know, food service distributors is our main customer. Mm -hmm. So like a coal wholesale here in Quincy is a great customer of ours. Um, we, we've got, you know, about 2,500 food service distributor customers all over the country. And we invite, you know, the majority mm -hmm. of them in for the show. And then the part that's growing the fastest for us over the past 20 years is, is our retail kind of distributors. Okay. So. For example, we would service, um, you know, the Hy-Vee distribution centers. We don't go to the Hy-Vee grocery store, but our truck goes to the Hy-Vee distribution center. Uh, there's also a network of grocery wholesalers and convenience distributors, like an Amcon here in Quincy. Okay. So we end up with about 800 customers that come, and uh, it's a great event, and it's a great way not only for our manufacturers to set up booths and showcase their products, but it's a great networking event, you know, where we can listen to our customers there on things that we're doing well, but more importantly, things we got to continue to improve. Will this be your first one as president? Yes. Yeah, well. And keynote speech, anything along those lines? No, the, the best okay. part about being president, not CEO, is Dick Tracy still doing <laughs> heavy lifting on that. All right. So. Well, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's George Eversman, president of Dot Foods. I'm Ron Kinsher. This has been the Business Spotlight brought to you by Mercantile Bank. Your financial needs aren't independent of each other, so your financial advisors shouldn't be either. At Mercantile Bank, our experienced United Wealth professionals are united to serve you and your complete financial planning and wealth management needs. Are you just starting your investment journey or need to roll over a retirement plan? Do you need to plan for a loved one with special needs or for your own life after work? Maybe your business needs a succession plan or you want to enhance your employee benefit programs. Whatever steps you need to take, our United Wealth experts are ready to take them with you. Together, we are united. Muddy River News, our home, our news.